well, why don't we start with something that we all agree on, right? We agree that Jesus is Lord. Amen. We agree that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We agree that He is the Savior, that He died for our sins, that He rose again from the dead, that He's alive now, He's our hope of forgiveness, He has given us the gift of eternal life, and He makes life worth living, doesn't He? Because it, He shows us what life is all about. It's not about these mere 70 or 80 years. It's really not. It's about eternity. So when you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and he came into you, why are you still here if it's about eternity? You know why you're still here? Because he's here in you. And he loves to, he never created us to have separation where God's over there and we're down here. But oftentimes we still think of things that way. But when Jesus came, we got to see what heaven was like. Why? Because heaven was in him. Amen. He said everywhere he went, he manifested heaven. Is that okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like manifested heaven. That's a fancy word. It's like, you know, it's there. <laughs> you can understand that. Now, I'm not going to be like the pastor. I'm really not. You know, he's a pretty articulate guy. And so, you know, I know I'm not what you're used to. But I just ask you to be gracious, okay? Because uh, I am who I am. And uh, I'm here, and Jesus will use me. And he loves you the way you are, and I'm not going to try to change you. How's that? So if you don't prefer the way I speak or minister and that kind of thing, that's okay. I'm not asking you to change your preferences. You can be glad when I'm gone, but hey, I'm your brother, brother in the Lord, and you're my brothers and sisters in the Lord, and I'm going to love you. With all I got in me, how's that? <laughs> all right? So that's good. Well, uh, thank you for opening your doors. And I'm just excited about what God's going to do. So I thought another good place to start, I, I just thought what we would do over the next three nights is, is I want to focus on some really simple things, but hope, help you connect them to why healing is important, why healing how healing can be ministered. Many of you are here tonight because you want healing, right? Can you put your hands up if you came here just like, you know what, just shut up, I just won't be <laughs> There's a few of you here, okay. That's all right. But others of you are here because, you know what, I don't want to just get healed, and I just don't, I'm not necessarily here because I want to be healed. I'm, I'm here because I want to know how does this work. I read it in here, but I want to see it in my life because I'm sick of the devil beating up on my family, my friends, my neighbors, my children. How many of you are more like that? There's a few of you. Okay, well, I'm glad you're here. And some of you could raise your hand for both, and that's okay because I do these uh, divine healing workshops around the world and it's not uncommon to see probably somewhere between 80%, around 80% of the people that come in and say, you know what, I got stuff going on in my body that God didn't put there. Mm -hmm. Okay? I know that this is not right. This isn't the way God designed me. Okay? So let's just start there. Jesus said, the disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Right? And he said, this then is how you should pray, Matthew. Our Father who is in heaven. No one ever spoke like that before, guys. And we take it for granted because we get it as tradition, don't we? But when they said, you speak to God and you call God our Father, holy smokes, that's a big deal. So what does that mean? That means that God created us to be sons. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it says that God predestined us to be adopted as sons through Christ Jesus. Now, how many of you know that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God? Amen. You'd all be wrong. He is the only, He was the only begotten Son of God. When He came, there was none other. He is, He was the only begotten Son, son of God. But now, Romans says that He's the firstborn among many brethren. 
Do you understand that up to that point in history, human beings were living as empty containers that had been taken over from the outside? God created us empty so that he could fill us with life and love and power from the inside. Because how many of you just know you need to be filled with love? How many of you know that you need truth? You need fellowship. You need to be connected. You need destiny and purpose and identity. God created us to be image bearers. His image bearers. That means we were created empty so he could fill us with himself. Fill us with his image. Jesus Christ in Colossians, it says, he is the image of God. Do you understand that if you struggle with a low self-image, you don't have to improve it. You can just shoot the thing. I don't need a self-image. I get Christ as my image. Amen. He gets to be my image. So everything that he is, when I receive Jesus Christ, I have died. The old is gone. Now God gives me himself and he becomes one with me and moves in on the inside. That's why Jesus said to, to Nicodemus, he said, you know, it's unless a man is born again, he can't even see the kingdom of heaven. Do you know that God is all about putting life into you? He's not just saying, try harder to live the Christian life. Try hard to be good. He's saying, receive life into yourself so that you can be good. My dad used to tell me, you know, when I was little, he used to, before we would go over to some friend's house of his, you know, and when I was little, he would say, now I want you children to be good. You know, he didn't really mean that. What he really meant was, I want you children to act like you are good. <laughs> because if we really were good, he wouldn't have to tell us to be good. Because if we just simply were good, he would just say, now I want you children to just be yourselves. <laughs> but he didn't say that. He said, pretend for a little bit, please. <laughs> but you know what? Jesus didn't come on this planet trying his hardest biting his nails, gritting his teeth to try to be something he wasn't. He said, if you see me, you see the Father. The life that I live is not the life. The life that you see is not mine. It's the life of the Father living through me. He was a container of someone else's life. So here's what I want to propose to you, okay? The Christian life is not just a different belief system. It's not just a different lifestyle. It's a different life form. It's a different life form. It's the life that God put into the womb of Mary in Bethlehem. It was the life that made Jesus different. He was awesome, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're used to Jesus being awesome, but every time he was awesome... We think that the reason Jesus was awesome is because, oh, he's God, right? And he is God. Don't get me wrong. He is the eternal son of God. You and I don't get to join the Trinity as, <laughs> but we get to join into the fellowship of the Trinity. That's amazing to me. Don't ask me to explain all this stuff. My son, I remember when I was jogging, he was five years old. He said, Dad, can you explain the Trinity to me? He always does this while I'm jogging. <laughs> he said, sure, son, no problem. <laughs> it's like the clover. <laughs> you know, whatever. Anyway, but this is amazing. Jesus Christ is God, but he chose to come as the eternal Son of God, to step down off the throne and to live as a man. Jesus did not do miracles because he was God. You listen to him. He said, I can do nothing apart from my Father. The works I do are not mine, but the Father working through me does his work. So don't buy into the fact, oh, you know what? We read what Jesus did, and we say, oh, that's a Jesus thing. 
He can only do that. And I can't. Think of it this way. Jesus said, every disciple, when he's fully trained, will be just like his master. Just like his master. Ephesians chapter 4 says that God's plan for the ministers is to equip the saints to do the works of ministry so that, the, so that every member of the body attains to the full measure of the stature that is Jesus Christ. Oh, so God didn't put these little thresholds on us to say Jesus is the only one that can be awesome. He adopted you and me to be sons just like him. And not only that, he put the supernatural life of the son inside of you and me. It's, a, it's the life of the spirit of God, that uncreated life, that divine nature. That eternal life. See, we read eternal life and we think life forever. Yeah, but you need to understand what eternal life is. It's the life of God inside of you. Zoe life. That's the life that healed the sick. That's the life that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That's what he poured out from heaven on Pentecost. Is that cool or what? Amen. Is that kind of like, okay, can you just stop for a second? Because that's like, whoa, you know. So if you came in here and that went right over your head, I hope it did. Because it goes over mine. Don't ask me to explain it. It's just the word that I'm preaching to you. Receive it here. Do you understand that God is not defining you by your attitudes over the last uh, day? And how many of us think that our relationship with God depends upon, oh, he, you know, he looks there. Do you know in Colossians it says, when Christ, who is your life, is revealed, you will be revealed with him in glory? Do you know God says, Christ is your life? Christ is your life. Paul said, don't ask me to explain this. I mean, 2,000 years ago. I have been crucified with Christ. Right. Yet no longer, it's no longer I that live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live now, I live, and listen to this is in the King James, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. Isn't that awesome? He gave himself for me. Why? I live by the faith of the Son. It's Jesus living in me. So as I learn to believe what Jesus believes and agree with that, then I live by his faith. And his faith operates in me, and there's life that comes out. So if there's things that you believe about you that God doesn't believe. Hmm. You believe if you feel like God doesn't love you, he, does, he must not love you. Jesus doesn't believe your feelings. How about you just give them up? <laughs> Jesus doesn't believe your doubts. He believes what he believes. And as soon as you say, you know what? I'm just going to give my doubts up too. How about, you know what? And if you really want to do it, do it right, give your doubts up for Lent. Just give them up for like 40 days. And just say, you know what? I'm just going to believe what Jesus believes about me. Well, let me tell you what Jesus believes about you. He believes that his spirit is now your spirit. And guess what? It was the spirit of Jesus that made him awesome. He chose to share himself with you as life. As your life. So that by faith, he can dwell in you. So give him your mind. Let the mind of Christ dwell in you. Give him your heart so that the heart of Christ dwells in you. Give him your body so that you really become the body of Christ. He can express himself through you. Now, listen, it took me years to break through to that kind of stuff. <laughs> because it's right there. But man, for it to, for it to just become, ah, oh, this is reality. Oh, I'm seeing life from God's perspective. He's opened his own perspective up on the inside of me. And now I'm seeing not with my own mind. It's like the mind of Christ is dwelling in me. Like, it, you know, have you ever wanted to try to explain something with words to people and they don't quite get it? Like, if I could just put my mind in yours here, you'd get it. <laughs> but God did that. 
That's what the gift of the Holy Spirit is. He puts His Spirit inside of you. And so now the two become one. So you get to enjoy. This is uh, Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, by the way. That God sent the Son to born under the law to redeem those under the law. What does that mean? When He gave Himself up on the cross, He was buying us back. He was buying us back. You ever gone to a pawn shop, you know, and you and you pawn something, and then you give they give you a redemption ticket, and when you give them the ticket, what you redeem what you pawned, right? So what the rightful owner gets to repossess what belongs to them. That's good. How many of you say, man, I so love belonging to God. I so want to be His. That's exactly what Jesus did. So he comes to live in us. Now we grow up into him and he grows up in us. He's perfect and complete and you're complete in him. You're not now an incomplete human being. You're a complete one. Because God created you to contain him. You're here to manifest heaven too. Because God created this world to be good. And Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. Let me ask you, how many people did Jesus go around making sick? (laughs) Jesus was the best teacher, right? And he had some terrible students who didn't get the lessons very good, right? How many of them did he smite with something to teach them a lesson? But how many people do we have running around the church these days to say, you know what, God might make you sick to teach you a lesson? Hmm. Let's don't say that. Jesus said, have I been so long with you, and yet you don't know me? You know, and that was, just show us the Father. So let me give you a little thing that's really helped sort a lot of stuff out for me. And you just train yourself to go back to this over and over and over. And it sorts out so much, because i got to tell you, there are weird people that teach weird things that have Bible verses for everything they teach. But I got, I mean, there are people picketing soldier funerals saying that God hates them and is glad that they're dead, and they got a Bible verse for everything that they said. But I got to let you know something. Don't be pushed back by that. Here's, here's the deal. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, you know that God spoke to our fathers in times past, in many portions and in many ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us in the Son. Right? He spoke to the, the Father. So it's in the Bible, it's the revealed Word of God, but it's bits and pieces and portions. Many ways. That's how He spoke to them. To us, the Word of God was made flesh. And so God just said, look, I'm tired of trying to tell you what I'm like. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to walk around in Jesus for a while. He healed the sick. It was good having Daddy with us. Hmm. Daddy enjoyed being with his kids. He really did. Because, you know, it used to be when somebody was born blind, People just thought, well, that's how God wants them. And God's saying, no! Used to be when somebody was born deaf, that that's, people would say, well, that must be how God wants them. And God's saying, no! Used to be somebody would get maimed and they would say, oh, God must be trying to teach me something. And he's saying, no! But in Jesus, he shows up. And those who are born blind, he gets to say, no! Nah! <laughs> and they get to go see him. And he's like, yeah! I'm the I get to call my kids. You know? The people that are born deaf get to hear. The people that were born lame get to walk. And you and I, who were born sinners, he makes us born again. He forgives us of our sin. And he says, no more separation. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. So you can, you can forget 
about trying to improve the old you with Jesus. How about you just step into Jesus and begin to learn to live through Him? Because that's what 1 John says, that in this the love of God was manifest, that He gave His only Son, that we might live through Him. Let me tell you how this works. Is it okay? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have ministry for healing, but I want to do more. I want to lay a little bit of a foundation so that it can help you have, understand. It took a while to break through this. I didn't always believe this. I came home from the mission field 14 years ago because my wife was sick and we weren't able to, you know, I believed in healing. It was so frustrating to read the Bible, believe in healing, and not see it work. You know, I would pray. How many of you pray? Oh God, please heal. You know, and like, <laughs> you know. And then after a while, you're like, okay, maybe I should just stop because I'm tired of getting frustrated. Okay. Now listen. Part of the problem is, get this. We believe in healing, but we pray for healing. That's the problem. Jesus never prayed for anybody's healing. Never. He commanded healing. He commanded sickness to go. He exercised dominion. Why? Even though he said, it's not, I can't do this. But you never see Jesus going, oh, please, Father, give him a sign. Please, God, right now, just heal him. You know? So it's, it's not that, that, that God doesn't hear our prayer, but that that reveals that we don't understand our union with God through Jesus Christ. That he was the prototype of a son of God. And everyone who believes in him, God gives the right to be called children of God. To walk as sons in the Son. We don't have our own sonship. We get to, he gives us the relationship and the standing that Jesus has. We get to participate in who he is. That's awesome. That's different. I can't mess that up. <laughs> That's been going on for eternity. Now I can mess up, you know, trying, but I can't mess it up. I can always go back to that. That's so solid, so stable. You know, if I trip and fall, I just get up. Because the righteous man may fall seven times, but he gets back up. Amen. Why? Because he's righteous. He can't stand it on the floor. That's not what he's made for. He was made to walk with God. He was made to walk with God. And some of you in here have been allowed, you've been deceived because the enemy's been beating you up. And you think that because you fall, you're not righteous. I want to let you know, you keep getting back up because you are righteous. That isn't who you are. When you fall, you're not being yourself. You've allowed the enemy to say, hey, you're being a hypocrite. No, you're not being a hypocrite when you sin. You're being, uh, when, when, you act, when you come to church, that's when you're being your real self. When you do talk to God, that's when you're being your real self. It's when you do the mess up, that's when you're putting on a false face. Yeah. You understand? Because God made you new, the old is gone. The old is gone, the new has come. 2 Corinthians 5.17, I bet they know that verse here. Indeed. Know that. Man, this is this is good. I can see it. Sometimes as a preacher, you can you can preach and you can tell, man, it goes out and it comes back. <laughs> you know, you gotta keep hitting that one for a while. <laughs> and then sometimes it goes out and it goes in. And that's good. Y'all are receptive. I'll just praise God for that. It's good. Alright, so this so what happened? I, I began to discover this. And then I began to realize that's what he... I walked in what I just told you for about seven years before I realized God started knocking on my heart and saying, you know what? There's a room in this house that you keep walking by. And it's called healing. The door's not locked. It's open. You need to open it. Jesus lives in me. He lives through me. I live, when I go to God, I wear Jesus. Do you understand? I don't wear me. I wear all that He is. He is my relationship with, the God, with God. So it's like I'm a little baby in a womb. You know, that's how I get to come into the Father's presence. I'm inside of Jesus. I wear Him. He's my righteousness completely. And I get to stand before the Father, and the Father says, I see you in there. I see you in Christ, right? That's the only place you ever see the Christian is in Christ. So I'm wearing Jesus. He says, you look just like him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Father, for giving me the best robe. 
That's what he does. He, he, we come home and say, oh, we're unworthy. Receive us like a slave. We'll try harder to do what you want. Just keep us in the house by what we do, right? God says, no, you don't get to stay in the house by what we do. You get to come into the house as sons, and I put the best robe on you, right? And then the older brother who's disappointed, you know what the father says to him? You've been trying so hard to get it right. And it seems like other people get all the good stuff. They are the ones that get the celebration of God. Why do they get the celebration? And I'm trying so hard and I don't have any joy. You don't give me nothing for my friend. You know, all that stuff. And what does the Father say to him? Everything I have is yours. <clears throat> know my heart. Everything God has is for you. His celebration is for you. He's glad you're home. He loves you. You're not second class. That's important. And it doesn't matter what you have spoken over you, how, you, how your father has treated you. Well, if God loved me, why didn't he make my life? Blah, 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 blah. I want to let you know Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that they might have life. Don't attribute your bad life to God. Jesus came. What kind of life did he have? He was born in a poor family. He was a refugee at the age of two. He was a hard blue-collar worker when he went back to Nazareth in a town that nobody wanted to live in. Everybody trying to get out of Nazareth. That doesn't, I know that doesn't connect with anybody here, but I'm just saying that. Okay? Yes, it does. So, but that's where God wanted him. And that's where God starts so many of his powerful works. In the places that nobody wants and nobody wants to be because he said, you know what? I love these people. These people are precious to me. You're awesome. You didn't get second choice. You're my first choice. I give myself to you. I hold nothing back. We went through this in adoption, okay? We, we went through an adoption in our family. I thought I knew about adoption because I was adopted. But it's totally different when you go through it as a father. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know what? I already had children. I have a, you know, like I had a son. And I knew, like, when my parents sent their kids over to my house, I loved them, but there's parts of me they just didn't get. <laughs> They're not mine. You know, I sent them home. <laughs> but, but, but my children get all of them. They get, they get the best out of God. And I gotta let you know, no dad purposely tries to screw their kids up. But, we, but Jesus said, if your father's being evil can do some good, man, you're calling me father. How much more good can he do? Listen, if there's parts of you that feel like your dad just totally messed you up and let you down, you just need to let you need to let that go because Jesus said, Call no man on earth your father. Okay? What you felt like they they let you down because there's part of you that was made for a better father. Mm -hmm. And you can just say, Look, the reason that they did what they did is because they didn't know who they were. They didn't know who I was. They didn't know who you were. I let it go. It's not true. It's a lie. It hurt me so bad because I took it as truth. But it's a lie. It's not the truth the way they treated me that that's my value. God, hanging on a cross, declares your value to him. When Jesus, in Luke chapter 15, when he was said... Uh, he said, you know, why are you eating and drinking with sinners? You know, that's a religious question. You, right? Why are you the Son of God hanging around with sinners? He told three stories about a shepherd who lost a sheep, who left the 99 to go find them. About a woman who lost one of her ten silver coins, who turned the house upside down sweeping to try to find it and found it and rejoiced. About a father who had one son who left him and another son who didn't get it. <laughs> And he brought his sons home, right? What is he saying? Sinners have value to me. And if they misplace themselves, 
I haven't forgotten their value. I don't define them by all their missteps and misplaces. I go get them to bring them back to the to restore them to their original created value. That's why the father didn't let the son come home as a slave. And that's why he won't let you get away with saying, well, I'm just a dumb sheep, I'm unworthy, I'm a sinner. You understand, the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. But do you understand, when you are born again, he takes out of you the heart of stone and puts into you a living heart that beats with the Spirit of God. Your nature has changed. The old man is gone. You put him off. The old is gone. The new has come. You are alive in Christ. You're made one with him. Live out of who you really are. That's what we do as Christians now. We're not trying to improve the old us. Man, that's crucified. Thank God. Just let that thing die. Every time he comes up, I don't try to improve him. I just put him off. <laughs> Get over there in the corner where you belong. <laughs> Stay dead. Whack. <laughs> you know? And the best way to put off the old is put on the new. I put on Jesus and all that he is and all his fullness. Okay. So I'm going to stop preaching a little bit. I'm sure a few testimonies. Is it okay if I do this a little bit? Because tomorrow night I want to talk about thy kingdom come. I want to talk about the kingdom. And uh, the, the next night I want to talk about the will of God. Uh, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Kind of use that as a little bit of a framework. So tonight I talk about our Father. God is our Father. He makes us sons. He gives us His nature so that we bear His image. That's who Jesus was. That's who lives in you and in me. That's why Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory, He hasn't changed the way He lives. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's changed one thing. His location. Now He lives in you and me. And so renewing our mind, Romans 12, 1 and 2, Amen. we have to renew our mind so that everything that says, oh yeah, but that was Jesus, gets out of there and we say, oh yeah, Jesus is in me. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. He can help this person. He can set them free. He can, he, can, he can help them through me. I discovered that in Turkey. Well, I'm going to transition into some testimonies. When I was in Turkey, I started seeing people that needed to be set free from demons. I started seeing people that needed to be healed. And the Holy Spirit started to lurch at them, these people through me. And I'm like, oh, that's a Jesus thing. And the Holy Spirit says, yeah, so don't get in the way. Let Jesus use you as his body. See, Jesus thought healing was a whosoever thing. John 14, 12, whoever believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and even greater, because I go to the Father. We all know John 3, 16, who, you know, for God to love the world, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Right? We believe that. And do the works that he does, and even greater, because he goes to the Father. That's a whosoever thing, too. It's not a special thing. So part of the thing that I do, even though tonight we're having kind of like a miracle service, I'm going to pray for some people. There's other people here. Uh, I want to let you know, one of the ways that I pray that's going to be a little bit different, I don't really pray. Jesus talked about a form of prayer that was more speaking to mountains. Okay? Uh, he said in Mark chapter 11, uh, verse 22, he said, Have faith in God. Whatever you, whenever, if, if you have faith as small as a grain of mustard seed, you can speak to a mountain, tell it to move, it will obey you. So whenever you stand praying, believe that you've received what you've asked for, it will be done for you, right? So there's a form of prayer of, of where you're thanking God for what you've received. Our heart towards God is, thank you God, I've received what I've asked for. You know what have we received? We've received the kingdom. Hey, thank you, God, I've got the kingdom. Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give to you. Now I speak to the mountains, right? And I tell things to happen. Jesus said believers will lay hands on the sick. Not the gifted, not the people with the TV shows, right? So I want to let you know, if you're here tonight, 
and you've been told the reason you're sick and the reason you're not healed is because you don't have enough faith, I want to let you know that Jesus never said that to anybody. Okay? Let's just take the pressure off of you. Jesus took responsibility for people, and he commanded his disciples, you go out and you go heal them. Your responsibility. So I, we're here tonight, we're just going to say, if you're here, you got sickness, pain, anything's not working right in your body, I just want to let you know, if you've been told that you got to have a lot of faith, I just want to let you know, Jesus said, all you need to do is be sick. <laughs> let believers lay hands on you, okay? So that's good. So I just want to break that up. The other thing is that you might have been told that you need to send somebody your money so that you can get healed. I want to let you know that that is blasphemous. That's wrong. That's bad. Uh, Jesus told his disciples, go preach the kingdom, heal the sick, cast out demons, freely you receive. So freely give. So that's important that you understand that the blood of Jesus, his suffering at the whipping post purchased healing. His suffering at the cross purchased forgiveness of sins. And his resurrection shows he's got the power to do it all. Our God has salvation. And that doesn't just mean getting you into heaven. That means getting sickness off of you. Mm. That means the power over evil, over death. And you don't have to choose. Only theologians make you choose. <laughs> well, if you had to choose between, you know, everybody would choose heaven over hell, right? I'd rather get into heaven with one eye than hell with two, right? That, but Jesus wasn't saying choose salvation, uh, uh, heaven over over healing, he was saying, choose uh, him over sin. So that you go to him. He doesn't make you choose. You get the whole package. That's what he gives you. So let me tell you some stories about the family. Uh, I've got a son who's 16. He just turned 16 today and got his driver's license. Praise the Lord. Our insurance is going up. <laughs> uh, he uh, one time, we go out ministering together uh, often. Like when we have prayer time, he'll come up and he'll, he'll help me with prayer. There's some uh, folks in the back. They're going to they're gonna be part of the prayer team tonight. Um, and so he said, uh, we got into the car, and, and I said, well, son, how how'd it go tonight? Because, you know, we get up here, and you got this prayer line, I got mine, and we kind of shuffle around and stuff like that. And he said, well, Dad, to be honest with you, I'm struggling. I don't, I try, try not to be discouraged. And I said, well, what's wrong? And he said, well, I know I have the same Holy Spirit that you do, but I'm noticing that you get better results than I do. And I just looked at him and I said, I don't get any results. Not a one. Mm. Not a one. Jesus gets all the results. And I said, if there's a part of you that was discouraged because you're not getting results, there's a part of you that would have been proud if you did get some results. How about we both just agree Jesus is the only one that ever gets any results <laughs> around here? The next night, Simeon had, had a man come up in his prayer line who had his eardrum <clears throat> blown out in an accident. He had not heard for years. It was medically impossible for him to ever hear again. Simeon laid his hands on him about three times, and his ear opened up instantaneously. He was able to hear perfectly out of his ear. And Simeon didn't go, I did it! He goes, Jesus! That's awesome. All I do and all you do is let someone else out who can get the job done. We, uh, we were over in Elizabethtown. Uh, it was my day off on Monday, apparently. We had a great day of ministry on Sunday. A lot of cool things happening there. But Elizabeth, I like to talk about the stuff that most of us will have to do. Friends, neighbors, people that you run into and stuff like that. So one of the things that, that I like is that you carry the kingdom around inside of you. And Jesus is always ready, whatever he, whatever he sees. So we're walking down, the parade breaks up, and uh, we walk. We just decide we're going to walk down the street. And I hear one lady uh, uh, hand her back, could you take this? My back really hurts. And I said, excuse me, ma'am, did you just say your back hurts? You know, I call those words of knowledge for dummies. <laughs> I like those, you know? So, uh, there's a spiritual gift where God can show you that lady's back hurts, okay? Uh, and, but there's, I like words of knowledge for dummies, you know? 
she said, my back hurts. I said, excuse me, ma'am, did you just say your back hurts? She said, yeah, it really does. And I said, well, I can help you with that. She said, oh, I'm fine. She thought I was going to try to help her with something, you know, carry me. I said, no, 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 I pray for the sick and God heals them. She said, give me your hand real quick. She said, right now in Jesus' name, pain go. Back be healed. I said, now move that around. See how it feels? She goes, wow, that's really good. So you can give your mom a bag back. <laughs> <laughs> so some of y'all may want to think twice before you want to get healed around I remember one guy, he brought me over to his, uh, his, his house, uh, and his mom and dad were there. And uh, what was it? Her, uh, his dad had, had real bad back pain. He had, he had had back surgery. Uh, some years ago, and the screw that they put in went cockeyed on him, and he didn't have enough money for a, for another back stretch. So he was in a lot of pain, couldn't hardly, he wasn't doing nothing around the house. He was good for nothing, and had a good excuse, you know. And so we prayed for him, and he was touching his toes and going like this, and, and I said, all right, now. <laughs> and then we prayed for his mom, because apparently his mom didn't have good hearing. And so his dad would just yell through the house trying to get her attention. She'd never come. And so we, we, we'd lay hands on her ears. And so we had him whispering from the back corner of the room. Can you hear me? She's going, yeah, I can hear you. You know? And said, so now y'all going to have a much better marriage. <laughs> the sheep is sort of out again. So, you know, that's really cool. And then we prayed for his mom because she had arthritis in both, both thumbs. I prayed, got it off of one, and then I had him pray, get it off the other. When I say pray, remember, I thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for your love for them right now. And now I'm speaking to things. I'm, I am in a prayerful spirit releasing God to, because it's not me speaking. I am speaking in the name of Jesus. I'm the only mouth he's got to speak with on the earth. I am laying hands with that in my hand. I am the body of Christ. You understand that that's the hand of Almighty Jesus on him? That's the only hand he's got. Or it might not be the only hand. That was his idea. He was tired of people waiting for three days on the hillside to get healed. He said, my, this is, this is I'm hooking you up so I can live in you. I need more bodies so that anywhere there's a believer, I can get the job done. Mm -hmm. So I want to let you know there's a number of different ways I've seen healing manifest. Oftentimes it manifests miraculously, instantaneously. We're Americans. We like the microwave. That's what we all came here for, right? Let's get it all done right instantaneously right now, you know? And uh, I want to let you know that that's, what, that's the majority of the stories that I, that I tell because that's what Jesus walked in. Uh, but I, I want to let you know that I've seen him heal miraculously, but I've seen him heal gradually over time, and I've seen him heal progressively. Sometimes people uh, walk out of, out, of, out of a service like this, they don't feel like they didn't get, they, like nothing changed in their body. But listen, Jesus said believers will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's good news. They woke up the next day, and it's like, where's all my back pain? Where'd it go? And then they wait for three weeks before they tell you, yeah, it's gone, you know? <laughs> that was my buddy who decided to do that to me. <laughs> Thank you, friend. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, as ministers, you want people to get well. You really do. Uh, tell you about my little nine-year-old daughter. Uh, my whole family walks in this. You understand this is really fun? When you're a when you're a when you're a mom and stay at home, sometimes you think, oh well, I can never do ministry. I'm busy, I got all these kids and stuff like that. <laughs> Man, my kids come I sometimes I work out of the home because of the ministry that I'm in. Sometimes they come, you know, crashing through the door with Walmart bags or high meat bags or whatever. And uh, and they're like, Hey dad, the cashier got healed. <laughs> What? And they'll come downstairs and they'll tell me the story. Yeah. And then sometimes not only does the cashier get healed, but some customers get healed. And then sometimes you go in the line and the cashier that got healed last week will pull over the bad boy because the bad boy's been complaining all day and she's tired of listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, that's really cool. My little nine-year-old has had the great, biggest creative miracle in our family. A lady uh, came to one of our meetings and had her thumb uh, just severed just, uh, just above where the quick of the nail 
started, has it all wrapped up. She had been in the emergency room the, the previous day. My daughter grabs hold of the lady's thumb. You know, because she's not. In Jesus' name, right now, thumb, you be made whole. Be made whole. Open it up. The lady felt the thumb grow in the bandage. She took her bandage off. The thumb was whole with a thumbnail. Not an adult thumbnail. One of them little uh, saran wrap looking sun chip baby thumbnails. You know, one layer of, of thumbnail. They're already grown out instantaneously in, in, her, in, her, in my daughter's hand. Why? Because it wasn't my daughter's hand. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And the more that we get over us and begin to believe what God believes about us, stuff starts getting really awesome. It gets fun. It gets exciting. So I want to let you know, some of you have stuff going on in your bodies that God didn't put there. Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I've come that they might have life. Some of you have stuff going on in your hearts or your minds that you're like, man, I've been dealing with depression. I've been dealing with bipolar. I've been dealing with all this kind of stuff. Or you just want a fresh touch from God. I want to let you know that we want to agree with heaven that God will touch you and set you free so that you can walk in the fullness of what I'm talking about. Okay? So that's part of what we're going to do tonight. Is that okay if we do that? Y'all ready for me to shut up? Let's get down to it. I like that. Well, Father, in Jesus' name, I just declare right now, God, that every, you know every need of every person in here. In Jesus, we just bless you. You are the Lord. We declare right now healing in every body. Right now, I just come against all sickness and all disease. Every infirmity, I command you in the name of Jesus. You go! Go! You leave these bodies now. I rebuke cancer. You go! In Jesus' name. Sciatica, go! Every bone and every muscle, I command you be made full. Spirits of infirmity right now, in Jesus' name, I bind your power and I command you, go! Leave these people now and never come back. Mm. Jesus heals them. Jesus heals them. They are blessed. In Jesus' name, every organ that's been damaged, I command it be restored. Every organ, I command you, in Jesus' name, you function properly. Lord, we just release your presence right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, just go out and fire through these people. Each one. We bless you. We bless you. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your presence. I'm feeling good. Yeah. All right. And you can take my joy. Cause the world didn't no. give it to me. You can take my joy. Cause the world no. didn't give it to me.